This is the Biz News Podcast, one-on-one conversations with experts in business and personal development. On paper, you may think you're a strong candidate for that job. But even though the interviews seem to go well, the phone remains silent. Why is that? It could be that a former boss, someone you may have put down as a reference, is saying things about you that are stalling your career. Jeff Shane, president of Allison and Taylor Incorporated, says the so-called neutral interview can be anything but neutral. We hear more in this Biz News Podcast. Let's start by uh, telling our uh, audience a little bit about yourself and your company. What is it that you guys do? We are the original pioneer in conducting reference checks for individuals who are concerned what a prospective employer will hear when they contact one of their former employers. Uh, as many of you are aware, it is not unusual, indeed common, that, uh, that uh, prospective employers will reach out, particularly to your more recent places of employment. They may reach out to HR or they may reach out to supervisors, former bosses, which I believe is the topic of our uh, subject today. Our organization conducts reference checks on behalf of individuals who want to find out what is that party going to say. And the way that we conduct our reference checks ensures that the party on the other end is unaware that we are working on behalf of uh, the actual job seeker that hires us. That's a pretty unusual business. What got you into it? Uh, we saw a crying need for it. We had a number of, uh, uh, it was an original family business. We had a number of uh, family members who were uh, unsuccessful in their job search and were concerned that maybe they were being blackballed, trash talked, as you will, uh, by a former employer, and there was no existing service to check that. So we saw a niche and thought there are a lot of people out there that need something like this, because one of the unfortunate or insidious aspects of it, uh, if a company is or a representative of a company is trashing uh, the former uh, employee, uh, it's highly unlikely that that kind of information will ever get back to the actual employee for their own legal protection. Prospective new employers are not going to say, uh, well, Dave, we didn't hire you because one of your references didn't look so good. No, the reality is they'll say, oh, we decided to go in another direction or more likely still, they'll, they'll never contact the candidate again. And then the candidate is left wondering what, what went wrong. And I hear it so often. The interview went well, things were looking so good. The offer was almost on the table. And then just like that, it dried up. And very often that's a tip off there's a bad apple in the reference barrel. And, and uh, that does come as a surprise to so many applicants. As you have talked to applicants over the years and told them the bad news, what's been the reaction and, and what on earth can they even do about it? Uh, the reaction has been one of kind of uh, devastation, if you will. Uh, unfortunately, so many people believe that uh, when their former employer is contacted, all that they will do is confirm as company policy, the person's employment dates and title, a so-called neutral reference. And that is indeed the mantra of many or most organizations out there. Unfortunately, that is not the reality of a great many organizations. For every 100 references that we conduct, approximately 47 of them come back with some level of negativity, which is flabbergasting in, in one respect. And understand there are typically two primary uh, parties that a prospective employer is going to call when they contact a former employer. Number one, the traditional venue, human resources. But the other one, the much more talkative, typically, party is former supervisors, former bosses. So if HR is a problem, and they often are, it'll be limited to uh, negativity along the lines of, no, they're not eligible for rehire, and the reason they're not with us anymore is they were terminated. Because typically, HR does not know the candidate personally. So 
When there is a problem with HR, those are the two problems. Supervisors, whole nother story. They knew the subordinate personally. And very often, although there's a certain company policy in place, the supervisor either doesn't know the drill, forgot the drill, ignored the drill. And so when asked uh, the, the uh, candid questions that our organization poses, their first knee-jerk reaction is to, if you will, shoot from the lip, answer honestly. And very often, on the, on the positive side, if they like the candidate, that's great. But if they had any reservations or worse than reservations, those are very often communicated uh, as responses to the questions that we pose. And along similar lines, when we conduct these, we also document the tone of voice of the candidate. And that can be very instructive. A truly savvy negative boss may know what they're not supposed to say, but by virtue of a hesitant tone of voice, or saying, I'll have to see what our legal department will allow me to say, those kind of responses are gonna to be toxic. So uh, the, uh, the supervisors, employers have long since figured out are gonna give much more candid commentary. They know they're supposed to get neutral commentary. HR has a better track record of giving neutral commentary, but what, an, what a prospective employer really wants is for to somebody to say, Dave, I'd hire him in a heartbeat, or Dave, I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole, and they know that former supervisors are the most likely parties to give that kind of input. And sometimes in a smaller industry, uh, the hiring manager and the most recent manager of the employee might even know each other from conventions or whatever. Uh, and so how do you get around that? And if I am the applicant desperate for that job, what should I be doing besides uh, sending the former employer a new car? <laughs> well, uh, step number one, and the, the reason for our existence is to find out what exactly are they saying? I would recommend for any candidate, uh, regardless of how secure or lack thereof they feel with their references. Check them out because candidly, you just have too much at stake. And references tend to give the same input over and over and over again, favorable or otherwise. So if somebody out there is not, on, uh, not a fan of the job seeker, they're likely to be giving out negative information again and again. And after a while, a lot of good opportunities uh, you know, are, are gonna be burned. And it may, you know, by the time a candidate figures out, it may be a little late in the game for whatever profession they are in. So my recommendation would be early on, decide who are going to be the likely parties called by a prospective new employer. And you can offer up your own list of references, but very often companies take your reference list with a grain of salt. They will assume, well, we know these people probably have their back or they wouldn't be on the reference list and or the personal references or somebody's Aunt Sally or whatever. The references they really want to know about, you know, who is their boss? What kind of input did they give? And never assume if you're the job seeker that, uh, that a prospective employer will not be able to find out this information. They can, they will. As you pointed out, Many of these companies and the, and the management hierarchy, they know each other. They talk to each other every day. Another venue would be LinkedIn. A lot of these go through maybe a premium LinkedIn service, and boom, they can get a lot of the information, and the job seeker is, is not even aware that this is happening. Another scenario will be most job seekers sooner or later are going to be asked, may we contact your former employer? If you say no, that's a red flag in the end of the game. So whether you want to or not, if you're asked, you're going to have to offer up that information. And it would behoove you to know what are they going to say before they offer it up? Because if it is unfavorable, there are steps you can take uh, to address it. And what might be a couple of those steps? The most common remedy for a, uh, a negative reference is what is called a cease and desist letter. This is on the mild end of the scale. The continuum is cease and desist letter on the mild end, take them to court, so to speak, on the heavy duty end. Defamation, discrimination, lawful or, uh, or um, 
defamation, discrimination, wrongful discharge, our reports are utilized in courts of law practically every day. So, uh, and many of our clients want to use negative information for legal action, lawsuits, et cetera. Most of our clients, however, either the ammunition from the negative reference is not sufficient to do that, number one, and or two, most references simply want the negative reference to quit doing what they're doing, not interested in taking them to court. Cease and desist letter is ideal for that. How does it work? So if we document negativity from a particular party and the client wants to do a cease and desist letter, one of our attorneys after communication with the client generates a strongly worded letter that would go not to the offender, but typically to the top person in the organization. That letter will identify by name the person that gave the commentary and say something along the lines of, you know, your company policy is or should be to communicate neutral information, confirmation of dates and title only. The comments of Sally May in your organization are putting my client's future employment at probable risk and may represent a violation of local, state, or federal law. Therefore, Mr. or Ms. CEO, your marching orders are to talk with the offending party, re-educate them on appropriate policy such that going forward, any prospective new employer that calls asking about my client will only get confirmation and dates and title as company policy. And if you tune this out, scary things might happen in round two. In the last 10 years, we have issued maybe 700 or so of those letters. As part of the service to the client, we always reconduct the reference check about a month later with the negative reference, utilizing a different calling consultant, a different organizational name, so they are not aware they're speaking with the same party. Out of those roughly 700 letters, I've seen a total of three that did not have the desired effect, better than 99%. And you might say, well, why is the success rate so good? Well, if you're the CEO, think about it. The person that, on whose behalf the attorney is sending the letter is not employed there anymore. There is no upside to the company to make their life difficult. Conversely, they don't know what that party might do. That party, a lot of our clients see blood red when they get a negative reference and some of them are interested in lawsuits, take them to court. And if you're the CEO, you don't want to put your organization at legal risk uh, for something as, in their mind, inconsequential as a negative reference. Also, it is true that almost every company out there, somewhere in the bowels of their policy and procedure manual, it does say, our policy is to confirm dates and title. They do that for their own legal protection. So most people never read the policy and procedure manual, so they're not aware of what is in there. But generally, there is for most organizations, and the person, again, getting the letter, they don't want any blowback from somebody that has long since left the company. So for them, it is typically a no-brainer to talk to the negative reference and say, you know what, our company doesn't need you know, this legal jeopardy here. Read my lips don't offer a negative input or the pink slip will be in your basket. Those must be happy days around those companies. <laughs> Over the years, you have probably seen some pretty outrageous things. What are a few of those examples, obviously without naming names? Oh boy, I'll tell you what, on our, uh, actually we have a whole segment on our website, allisontaylor.com, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-T-A-Y-L-O-R.com, which basically shows actual responses from some of the references that we have called. And some of them that immediately come to mind on a one to 10 scale, I'd give them a negative five. Uh, that guy couldn't, uh, couldn't do the job if his heart and soul depended on it. I mean, there are some extremely talkative supervisors out there. And remember, most people don't even know that this kind of service exists. So uh, typically, and, and supervisors and bosses also know that no prospective employer is ever likely to tell the candidate where the negativity came from. So from their point of view, they can let their hair down and say whatever they want, believing that it'll never, ever come back to bite them. And 
many of them, many of them subsequently find otherwise. And uh, our job is to provide that kind of uh, identification if it's uh, if it's uh, warranted and appropriate. At what point in the job seeking uh, uh, spec uh, timeline? Uh, should a job applicant enlist services of a company such as yours? That because is, surely they think they already know their good references. Their boss isn't going to say anything bad about them, right? That is a very good question. And the reason it's a good question is historically, most prospective employers would check the references and the background check, another service we offer, is the last order of business, okay? They go through the interviews with managers, whatever, and then at the very end, that's typically the process. However, in recent years, more and more uh, prospective employers are doing the reference and background checks up front. And you might ask, okay, well, why is that? Because uh, they have figured out that rather than have three layers of management, you know, interview somebody only to find out that they were totally trashed by their last employer. The idea is, hey, we're going we're gonna to vet them up front. And then, assuming there are no problems, then we'll invest the time of our management, et cetera, to do a deeper dive. So my recommendation to the job seeker is even before you get your resumes out there, vet your references, find out what they're going to say, never assume. In our 40 years of business, I have seen four instances, not many admittedly, where, the, where our client actually had a written letter of recommendation by their former boss. And yet when we called the former boss as part of the service, they went 180 degrees in the other direction. Now, granted, that is a, an unusual example, but the point is, Never assume that your references are going to do what you want and expect them to do. Don't assume because it's company policy. Don't, ex don't assume because the supervisor said, sure, yeah, they can call me. I got your back. No, very often they're just blowing off the, uh, blowing off the candidate. They don't want any, uh, any strife or dissension. So they say, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Got your back. But then when they're actually called and our, our, our interviews are very thorough and they'll pose not only are you eligible for rehire, what were the circumstances when you left? Can you enthusiastically recommend them? Rank them on a one to five scale in these areas. What were their strengths and weaknesses? Very often references end up being a mixed bag. Some are downright negative, like the extremes that I mentioned, but some of them are a mixed bag and prospective employers don't want a mixed bag. They don't want any negativity. They want either favorable or neutral end of story. So a, a reference that says, you know, I'll, I'll, I got your back and then offers a mixed bag is doing ultimately a disservice to the job seeker. And the sooner that the job seeker finds that out, the sooner they can mitigate it, either with a cease and desist letter, they might want to talk for whatever reason directly with the supervisor, or they might want to proactively go to a prospective employer and say, hey, you know what, in the interest of, of full disclosure and being candid, I expect you probably will call this reference. Let me tell you what I believe you will hear and let me offer, you know, the mitigating circumstances. Because if they don't do that, the employer is not going to come back and say, hey, you know, they said negative things. What's your side of the story? Doesn't work that way. You won't hear it. So if you're going to try and preempt the negative reference, you need to do it up front, knowing they're really going to do or say something they should not. But better still, and here's another caveat. Sometimes people say, oh, my God, if they call that reference, I'm dead in the water because I know they didn't like me. But the positive side might be, they may not have liked you, but they may be professional enough that when contacted, they will only say, uh, I can only confirm dates and title. So don't assume a negative reference or poison your own well by telling somebody, well, uh, if you call them, I don't think they'll, they'll say that they like me. No, they, they might do the honorable thing and give you a neutral reference, no harm, no foul. Again, that's something you want to know before you get too far into the job seeking process. Let me take this to the other side of the desk, Jeff, and as a prospective employer, many of us uh, find it harder and harder and harder to get to the, the truth about job applicants. 
Are references essentially dead in the water? No, uh, our organization works on behalf of individuals primarily, and that's what I've been describing to you, Doug. However, our organization under different organizational names also conducts reference checks for employers who are looking to vet the candidates and find out, is there more to the story here? And so uh, we also perform them on behalf of the, uh, and uh, the companies that are looking to do that give their candidates uh, the written disclosure to talk with us. So there are no, no surprises, nothing under the table at all. And, uh, and the full disclosure basically says, we're gonna do a reference check to vet this candidate and let the chips fall where they will. And sometimes the input is not favorable, in which case the employer has a useful tool or reason not to go forward with hiring them. Conversely, we hope most of the time that input will be favorable and it will, uh, it will reassure or validate the prospective employer's inclination to, uh, to hire that party. Uh, what has social media done to uh, reference checking and trying to find out about uh, job applicants? Is that, is that uh, good, bad, or indifferent? Uh, social media, as in every walk of life, has basically created a, uh, an, uh, a visibility portal into more things, if you will. And uh, certainly social media has, uh, in the reference checking uh, arena, uh, as we touched on earlier, uh, it is very possible, even likely, that prospective employers are, at a minimum, going to call up the name of the applicant on the internet to see what's floating around out there about that party, number one. And then number two, they're going to go to uh, entities like LinkedIn to see uh, if there's additional information, or conversely, you know, who are the kind of uh, parties, uh, you know, maybe by name that the individual worked with so they can reach out to those parties. And again, the candidate has no way of knowing what they're doing, who they're contacting, goes back to the never assume that a uh, prospective employer is not going to find something out. You better assume, they may not, but you better assume they're going to dot the I's and cross the T's and, uh, for what's at stake for you, new employment, uh, you're well advised to do your homework and do it early on. Jeff, you must have a job that is every day something new, different, and remarkable. <laughs> what would you like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about? I think we've covered some uh, some good and key bases here. I guess if I were if I were going to kind of sum up some of my earlier comments, uh, number one, never assume. Never assume that your employer is going to do what you think they will do, say what they will say, or confine their search to confirming dates and title. Prospective employers want to know more, and most of them will use whatever legitimate avenues they can find to do it. Number two, don't wait until you're too far into the game. I know some candidates who accepted the job offer that was made, actually relocated to a place of new employment. And then most, most employers have something along the lines of a 90-day provisional window where they can dismiss the person without cause for any reason that they want. And many companies use that 90-day windows to kind of uh, casually, after the fact, check out the references and uh, background check that maybe they didn't do up front for whatever reason. And if they find something they don't like, it can come back as a very rude shock. Some of the uh, saddest stories are people that have been in the job market, you know, trying to get in the job market for a year or more, thought they had the job, actually started, as the case I just mentioned, some of them actually relocated, and then the bottom falls out. It's so sad to hear. So uh, do your homework up front. If nothing else, if nothing else, even if it just validates all the good things you think will happen, I would argue you'll sleep a little better at night knowing that that is the case. And on your interviews, you can put some of these people forward more aggressively. Let's suppose it was a supervisor that didn't like you, but you already know because you had a reference check done that that person is just gonna confirm dates and title. You might be a little more comfortable offering up the name than if you're not sure what they're gonna come out of the woodwork with. So 
So never assume, do your homework up front and realize that if negative references do appear, if, un, if not dealt with, they'll probably be fatal, but there are remedies for those and our organization will help because I'm one of the principals of the company and one of the most gratifying aspects of this interesting job is helping good people get back on employment track because so many people didn't deserve you know, what they got to be dismissed. And if we can help some of them get back and uh, support themselves, their families, et cetera, that's, you know, one of the, uh, one of the uh, rewarding aspects of this job. You've been watching the Biz News Podcast. We welcome your input. Send your email to editor at biznews.com. Thanks for watching.